Hallelujah. Praise God. It's, uh, well, should be Thursday there in the Southern Hemisphere, Wednesday evening here in the Northern Hemisphere, and just a couple of days till Christmas, just uh, a few more days, and Christmas Day will be here. Uh, the day that we celebrate the, the birth of Jesus. And we've been looking in Luke chapter 1 at some of the dynamics that surrounded uh, the angel coming uh, to both Elizabeth, to Mary, uh, or to Zechariah, and, to, and to, to Mary. And and sometimes I think we read the Bible and we just look at it like a fairy tale. Oh, well, I don't. I'm sure you don't. But some people do. <laughs> and they don't really think about what is being said and, and the, you know, what the dynamics of that are. If you think about Mary being told by the angel she's going to be with child, think about the how, how honorable Joseph was. Now, in Jewish uh, uh, culture, in, in Torah law, uh, if Mary has been with another man, then she should be stoned to death. Uh, she's, she, she's going to have to tell Joseph, hey, listen, I, an angel's come and uh, told me that I'm pregnant, um, you know, <laughs> and it's not because of another man. So, you know, Joseph's going to have to get his own revelation of this. Praise God. And God works these things perfectly and brings it all together. So, so the honor of Joseph is that he, once he gets the word of the Lord, he's able to then pack up his wife. Now, think about this, this situation as, as well. Under the Roman occupation, they were under an oppressive regime. Uh, they were being forced into uh, going to their own hometown so that a census could be called. Um, and you don't see uh, here a mass rebellion. You don't see, you know, was it right? No. Was it oppressive? Yes. But here they are off to this uh, place called Bethlehem, which, by the way, somehow God worked it together. So even though it was, it was a, an unjust government that was ruling the land, Mary and Joseph needed to be in Bethlehem for Jesus to be, to be born. They, they, they were in Nazareth. So God will even use uh, and work through even unjust rulers because the heart of the king is in the Lord's hands. Well, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, as we know. Praise God for that. And so, uh, and, and so we've got all of these things now coming together in this amazing dynamic. And over the last few days, we've looked at some of the things the angel said. And I want to zero in on, on this because the Holy Spirit will come upon you is what the angel said to Mary. And we've looked at what that means when the Holy Spirit's on the scene. Nothing's impossible for God. And uh, verse 37 says, For God, with God nothing is ever impossible, and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the maiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. Now the statement we looked at yesterday and what we prayed into was with God nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. There is, there, is, there is nothing that can stop. Satan cannot stop the word of God and the power of that word from bearing fruit and coming to fulfillment. The thing is, you need to be in agreement with it. That word needs to be received and conceived inside of you and then released by your faith. When Jesus scattered the seed, there was no limitation on the seed. Or rather, when Jesus talked about this, the sower sows the word and the seed was scattered. Some fell on the wayside. Some fell on stony ground. Some fell where there was weeds. Others fell in good ground. The word had no limitation in it, in and of itself. Um, for with God, nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment the possibility of fulfillment is constant in the word of god but now look at mary's response which is what allowed jesus to be conceived and birthed now if you want the impossibilities of god to be possible <laughs> if you want let me say that again in, in a way I don't, I don't want that to be confusing if you want what God's word can produce so that nothing will be impossible, 
because of God and the Holy Spirit on the scene, then you have to have the response and be the ground where that can bear fruit. And Mary said, verse 38, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to what you have said. That has to be your response. Let it be done according, uh, unto me according to what you have said. So when the word goes forth, it, it is we're full of possibility. There is nothing that is impossible. When I say the impossibilities of God, I mean when God moves onto the scene, everything that is impossible suddenly becomes possible. Glory to God. He works from the realm of what looks impossible, but is possible. And so, and so what, we, well, it's impossible when we look at it within a natural setting. You know, somebody's arm growing back, the dead being raised, uh, you know, supernatural provision. All of these things may look impossible from natural eyes, but you get over into his realm when the Holy Spirit's on the scene, when the seed of the word of God is able to be sown, it becomes possible. It manifests as fruitfulness in Jesus' name. So here's what I want to deposit in your heart today. And it's as simple as this. Whatever the word of the Lord is that's come to you, your response simply has to be, let it be done unto me according to your word. That's all you have to say. You have to believe it, receive it so that it's conceived, so that it, the, the seed falls into good ground, and then release out of your mouth that which is in abundance in your heart, which you've believed. And let it become this faith substance released out of your mouth. And you believe what you say. And you shall have whatsoever you say. Amen. So Mary believed it. And she spoke it. And she gave it room. And, and really for that uh, seed to be conceived. And, and she gave birth to Jesus. Now, nine months later, she gave birth to Jesus physically. But in that moment, she gave birth to Jesus spiritually. Hallelujah. By faith. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. And so the angel could leave. The angel was, his assignment was done. Uh, she, he had imparted the word of the Lord. Faith had been received, conceived, and released in Jesus' name. And so I pray right now for you. That whatever the word of the Lord is for you. Whatever you know that God has spoken to you. That in this time, in this moment, in this season, that you believe it, you receive it, let it be conceived, let it become abundant in your heart, and out of the abundance of your heart, let your mouth speak and release and birth spiritually the things that are about to transpire, the fruitfulness that is about to break forth into your life in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I pray that you have a wonderful day if you're in the Southern Hemisphere. A wonderful evening if you're in the Northern Hemisphere in Jesus' name. Bless you and we'll see you again tomorrow for the next part of the Christmas days this week. Amen.